So hey everybody, what's going on? My name is Terry. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys and gals are all doing fantastic out there. So got a really quick little tutorial here for you all today about the latest beta for OBS Studio. This is of course OBS 31.0.0 RC1. Um, really enjoying the update folks, I really am. But there's a feature in here that I think a lot of people don't know about. And if you are using an NVIDIA based graphics card, especially one that is above an RTX 4070 Ti to where you actually have the dual encoders on your GPU, there's a feature again that not a lot of people might know about or they might have seen it and just don't know what it does. OK, so let's go over it now. All you got to do to access this function is this right here. You want to go down to settings. You want to go up to output over to recording and then you want to scroll down a little bit and it's this setting right here, split and code. Now by default, it could be set to auto, but I have seen on some people setups that it might be defaulted to disabled. But what this setting does is that previously in versions of OBS, in order to encode a uh, you know recording to both encoders at the exact same time, you would have to come up here, set the preset to like P2 or P1, and then that would enable the split encoder recording. In other words, to like take a 4K re recording and to split the recording up between the two encoder chips on your GPU to record everything a lot more efficiently and way faster, you know what I mean? But now to get this functionality, it's just a toggle that they put separately. So it, it doesn't really matter what preset you put it on. As long as you have this on two-way split, it will split the workload evenly between those two encoders on your GPU. And this is really great if you're, you know, wanting to like, you know, record 4K, for example, okay, 4K high frame rate, like 4K 60, 4K 120. If you do it this this way here, you totally should be able to. Again, you got to have the actual graphics horsepower to push those kind of frames either way. But as far as being able to split that load up between the two encoder chips more efficiently, this is how you do that. Now, keep in mind, though, okay, folks, that this option is only available if you re record another AV1 or HEVC and H.264, or, or in other words, the old school way of re recording with either CPU or GPU. Uh, that option is not here at all. OK, so for my, you know, local recordings, what I do for a high quality recording is I do this right here, a variable bit rate with target quality. I set my target quality to around 20. And for my target bit rate, I set that to around 50,000 kilobits per second. My keyframe interval, I set that to two. My preset, I put that on six. Everything else here, I do the same besides multipass mode. I just put that on single pass. And that's mainly because the bit rate is so high. In my opinion, I just don't need all that extra fluff to keep it looking good. You know what I mean? Same thing here for look ahead and adaptive quant quantization. Um, I disable both of these because they do utilize a little bit of CUDA. And again, because my bit rate is already so high for these local recordings, I don't need the extra help making my footage look good. Then down here, B frames two, B frames as reference. Uh, I just put it on middle B frame only. This option really doesn't matter a lot, especially for local recordings at such high bit rates. But again, just it helps just a little teeny tiny bit. So I figured why not? And then again here, folks, for the split encode, I put mine on two way split just to again, like I said a second ago, to split the recording load evenly across those two chips on my RTX 4080. Now, there is one scenario where you actually don't want to use this, and that is when you are streaming and you have the replay buffer enabled as well. So what the replay buffer allows you to, you to do is essentially to um, you know do Twitch style clipping directly on your system instead of the platform you might be streaming to. And that's great because whenever you do that, you can be streaming at whatever lower bit rate your platform of choice allows you to stream at. But then your replay buffer that you record with natively, you can set that to like 4K recording 60 frames per second with a very high bit rate to get the highest quality possible for your recordings to edit and upload later to TikTok, Twitter, whatever it might be, right? Well, the thing is that whenever you have two-way split, again, you are splitting that load on your encoder chips one after another, right? So whenever you're streaming, you're already utilizing one of those encoder chips. So whenever you hit that, you know, uh, replay buffer button to take a clip, 
it's going to also split that clip load between those two encoder chips, including the one that's already being utilized for your stream, wherever to, to again, whichever platform that might be. So if you do that, you might run into a scenario to where your stream lags for that split second or two or your clip lags or OBS kind of chugs a little bit because it's trying to utilize an encoder that's already being used for the actual stream. So whenever it comes to streaming, I just leave this here on a uh, split encode. I leave it on and disabled for my re recording tab. But again, for local stuff, two way split, in my opinion, if you have a graphics card that that can utilize the feature, I definitely recommend you go ahead and use that again, just for the efficiency. You know what I mean? Now, unfortunately, uh, this tutorial is only really, you know, uh, for people that have an NVIDIA based graphics card. I don't know if an AMD card even has an option like this built into the hardware or even at a driver level. I have no idea. So if you do have an AMD card, there might be something similar that you can do. I just don't know what it is. Same thing for the Intel art cards. Again, I'm so sorry, but I don't have the hardware to do it myself. I apologize. But for all of you NVIDIA fans out there, if you have, again, higher than an RTX 4070 Ti, 4070 Ti Super, 4080, 4080 Super, and of course an RTX 4090, you should be able to utilize this feature in OBS Studio no problem whatsoever. But as per usual, though, everybody, any questions, concerns, comments, whatever it might be, sound off down below. If you want to see more content like this here, do me a huge favor. Get subscribed to the channel. Get this video liked. It helps me out. Helps the channel out a lot, folks. It really, truly does. And like I always say, folks, again, my name is Terry. Thanks a lot for coming by and happy streaming, y'all.